Hello everybody, my name is Ryan or Aminar Productions and welcome to a brand new LEGO Star Wars Top 10 video. This time we're going to be counting down the Top 10 Lowest Rated LEGO Star Wars Sets according to Brickset.com and their user reviews. I've set a few parameters for this video, unlike the last video I did, which was the Top 15 Highest Rated LEGO Star Wars Sets on Brickset. And if you want to check that out, that'll be linked down below or you can find it on the end card at the end of this video after you watch this one. So for this video, basically there are rules and the rules are that they have to be a standard system set only. No no poly bags, no micro fighters, no planet sets, no buildable figures, no value packs, and no advent calendars can be counted for this list. Also, on top of that, there has to be at least two user reviews on a given set for it to be on the list. Otherwise, I feel like just one review is too small. And I realize two reviews isn't a whole lot either, but it's better than one. But, you know, there's not a ton of reviews on a lot of these sets for some reason. So, I've just gone with two as kind of my baseline. If you guys want to see this list for yourself, I suppose you can go on Brickset. Com, but there are a lot of sets that don't have any reviews, especially like the smaller polybag sets and the newer sets, so you will find that is an issue when looking through some of the ratings, but I've compiled the 10 lowest rated sets, kind of. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start out with number 10 on the list. It's the 10018 UCS Darth Maul bus set from the early 2000s. It was given a 3.5 star rating by four user reviews, and I kind of get where they're coming from with this one. I feel like this is a pretty crappy looking Darth Maul model. Like, LEGO could obviously do a lot better today, and it just is a rough model. It's a really, you know, rudimentary build using just a lot of basic bricks and plates, and I know some people might like that, but I can also understand why reviewers may feel like that doesn't look quite the best. Maybe it would have been better if they had waited 5 or 10 years to make a model like this, but back in the early 2000s, I don't feel like the technology was there to quite get all the shapes right. Anyway, moving on to number 9, we have the 75145 Eclipse Fighter, also given a 3.5 star rating with 3 reviews. I feel like this one is down here because it's on the Freemaker Adventures TV show, that's what it's based off of. However, personally, I do like the model. I love that it includes a brand new Dengar figure, or what was a brand new Dengar figure at the time in 2016. It's got another very nice character, and it just is a really cool model, I thought. I think if it appeared in a Star Wars movie, it would be a little bit more popular among users. However, I felt like because it was in the Freemaker Adventures, it was just kind of given a lower rating because of that. Again, I still feel like it's a nice model. I love the look of it. It's got this great feature where you can kind of push the engines and wings, if you will, out into like a straight version as opposed to being pulled back. And I love that. I think it works seamlessly. You obviously get this nice red and black color scheme. But again, this is the ninth lowest rated LEGO Star Wars set on Brick Set, which is pretty crazy to me. Coming in at number 8, we have the 75084 Wookiee Gunship. This one included 570 pieces for about $60 back when it was released in 2015, and I felt like it was a decent set. However, Brickset users gave it a 3.5 star rating with three reviews. It had Kanan and three different Wookiees. It was very unique looking. I love the design and color of it. You don't see many, like, strictly tan ships like this in Star Wars. Had some very nice sticker designs on it as well, some very nice wing flaps. It also had those newly introduced stud shooters that were giant and you could spin them around and shoot off a bunch of studs all at once. Had very nice landing gear with kind of the ski piece and I really did enjoy this set. It had very nice looking cockpit but 3.5 star rating according to Brickset users. I just disagree with this one on a fundamental level. I guess it was unpopular because it's from kind of an unpopular show but I still feel like this one's better than Brickset users give it credit for. Coming in at number 7 we have the 75041 Vulture Droid set which was $25 back in the day. Brickset users gave it a 3.5 star rating with just two reviews, so I guess it could have been different had there been more reviews, but I wholeheartedly agree with this one. I feel like this was a pretty sloppy model from LEGO. It felt weird. It looked weird. It was a complete departure from the previous Vulture Droids we had received from LEGO, and usually that's a good thing when LEGO kind of one-ups themselves and goes with a bigger model like this, but in this case, I just don't feel like it worked. The Buzz Droid, Neomodian Warrior, and Pilot Battle Droid just weren't enough to pull this set out of the gutter for me. I feel like it was a decent set, but the Vulture droid and hyena droid bomber kind of all fall in the same category to me as oversized for what they should have been so i don't particularly like this set it was cool that it had a very exclusive minifigure but other than that it was pretty lacking to me the stickers were overdone you know they're all over the set and i just didn't really love this one i agree with the brick set users coming in at number six we have the 75142 homing spider droid given a 3.3 star rating with just three reviews and i completely agree with this one this was basically a remake of the 2013 version 
version, except they added stud shooters into it, which I think made it worse. It was more playable, but I don't feel like for me it was that great. It had battle droids, an elite corpse, clone trooper, and Yoda, so I guess those two figures were supposed to take on an entire homing spider droid and then one of the mini spider droids. I just don't get it. The mini figure selection is a little bit odd, but it's kind of from the Battle of Kashyyyk, and it went side by side with the clone turbo tank, I suppose, but I'm still a little bit confused as to why LEGO re-released this set just three years later when they could have gone with something like a Wookiee gunship or something in its place as a Kashyyyk set, so I feel like LEGO kind of dropped the ball on this one by re-releasing basically the same exact design just three years later. Like, it's okay if it's been 10 years, but it had literally only been three years, so the 3.3 star rating should probably be worse in my opinion. At number 5, we have one of the most controversial LEGO Star Wars sets of all time, in my opinion, at least it's the 75098 UCS Assault on Hoth, and it isn't much of an assault because the only things assaulting Hoth are a snowtrooper with a big mini turret and a snowtrooper on a speeder. So if it was a true assault on Hoth, you'd get maybe an at and an at -ST, you know, something a little bit extra to be attacking the Hoth base. It's more of just the Hoth base, not an assault on Hoth, so the titling right off the bat gets me wrong. Then it's called a UCS set. This is not a UCS set. This is just a play set. This is a big play set. This is not Ultimate Collector Series. No collectors are buying this to collect. Kids are buying this to play with. And for Ultimate Collector Series, which I feel like prides itself on being so accurate, it really missed the ball in a lot of areas. The Wampa could not fit through its own cave. The shield generator is too small. It's supposed to have four shield generator thingies, and it only had three. So there's two major inaccuracies right there. On top of that, most of this stuff was available previously in other sets, barring the Ion Cannon and the shield generator, which then again are mostly inaccurate, which is a real shame. But the Snowspeeder, the Wampa cave, the Tauntaun feeder, you know, the trenches, the big Hoth door was all previously separate sets and LEGO is just like, let's just throw these all together, do an all-in-one set, which I understand, but slapping the UCS label on it really hurt it, and then the $250 price point was just felt like a slap in the face, honestly. So this set, overpriced, given a rating of three stars on four reviews, and I totally agree with it getting a low rating. UCS Assault on Hoth, pretty piss poor LEGO set in my opinion. On to number four, we have the 8007C3PO Technic model. This was given a rating of three stars with four reviews, and I'm kind of surprised there aren't more of these Technic models down here on this list. Maybe there just weren't enough reviews on some of them, but these are some pretty rough models, and this C-3PO is no exception. It didn't really work for LEGO Star Wars, much like buildable figures, but I found these sets to be rather interesting, and this one just received a low rating, probably because it's just so rough looking. It just was, you know, it was ten years before it should have happened, honestly, and it was shown that it didn't really work with the buildable figures either, even when LEGO creates special pieces just to make the figures look cool it doesn't really work so the Technic line no surprise didn't work here and again three stars on four reviews I'm not surprised are you our next set kind of surprises me, but it also kind of doesn't. It's from the new movie, So the Way Star Wars Story. It's set 75212, a Kessel Run Millennium Falcon, given three stars on three reviews, and I can kind of get behind why this has such a low rating. I find that the cockpit doesn't quite color match the rest of the ship, and it makes it look a little bit weird. The white coloring of the ship makes the big gaps in between the panels a lot more apparent. Not that they're big, but like the gaps in between the panels are just more apparent. It just is the way it is. And then maybe some people found some of the minifigures to be a little bit lackluster that are included in the set. However, personally, I find the set to be overall rather nice, but perhaps the price of 170 US dollars for 1,414 pieces was a little bit off-putting to some other people too, so I'm not really sure exactly what's going on with this set, but I kind of get where some people are coming from, and then there's another part of me that's like, but it's not all that bad. But three stars on three reviews, that's that one at number three on our lowest rated sets. The second worst rated LEGO Star Wars set of all time, and this is kind kind of a big surprise to me. It's the 7257 Ultimate Lightsaber Duel. This is a set that I always wanted as a kid. I never got it as a kid, and I recently got it, I believe, back in 2016 in a trade from a friend, Wumbo Watson, and I figured out why this set is so low rated. It's got a 2.8 star rating on 20 reviews, so that's a pretty genuine sample size for what we have going here, and this thing, its main issue is that it has this feature where you have these sticks that you can have the Jedi fight on, you can swing them around 
However, whenever you lift the sticks up, the Jedi just seem to flip over, like you can't get them to stay up straight. The rest of the model is a little bit lackluster as well, it's not quite accurate to the movie, it's just kind of this random playset, and I felt like LEGO didn't do a great job with this one, and I totally agree with everyone's reviews. The highlight of the set would obviously be that for $30, you get two light up minifigures, and this is something that LEGO hasn't done since 2005, so that's something that is kind of a upside to this set, but the rest of the set is very, very lackluster, and it's a real shame that this one is so poorly regarded by so many fans because it could have just been so much better. Anyway, finally, we have the number one lowest rated LEGO Star Wars set, and for good reason, it's the overpriced 75199 General Grievous Combat Speeder. This is a set that costs 30 US dollars for, I believe, 159 pieces, and it was given a 2.5 star rating from both users that have reviewed it, so it's got a pretty low rating. It's a pretty overpriced set, like it's one of the more overpriced LEGO Star Wars sets ever made, and it's a real shame that LEGO put this set out for such a high price. It could have been a much cooler one had it been released, you know, five years ago when the Clone Wars was hot for $10 less, but LEGO waited so long and it just doesn't fit in with what we have going on in our modern day LEGO Star Wars line. So it was given a pretty low rating. And I think most people agree with me. This is one of the worst LEGO Star Wars sets in a few years. It's definitely up there with the worst of them all time. It might be the worst all time, but that is up for debate amongst everyone. So that is the lowest rated set again, 2.5 stars. If you guys did enjoy the video, hit that like button. If you did, of course, subscribe. And if you want to change this list in any way from how the bricks set users have it let me know in the comment section below are some sets missing from this list i'm curious what you guys think so thank you all for watching guys i greatly appreciate it check out one of these two videos on instagram to see them yet i'll see you on the next one peace out